Also ich würde schon sagen, dass so, so 70, 60, 70 Prozent auf solchen Hardtech-Partys Christel gehören. Um mal mehr jüngere Menschen zu greifen. Verkaufen dann auf Spielplätzen oder Schulen. Am besten sind immer Kinder auch unter 13 Jahren. Die sollen nicht strafen. I suffered a severe psychosis and um, I was eating. I was nearly dead. <laughs> Crystal meth has devastated communities in countries across the world. It's incredibly addictive, and chronic use leads to the death of brain cells and severe psychiatric disorders. Meth has always been rare in Europe, but that's about to change. Every other weekend, I take crystal meth with my partner, and we have amazing experiences. We have the best sex with each other that we've ever had. For the first time, organized crime groups are mass producing the drug on the continent. And in Germany, the meth market is booming. Wow. That's a lot of meth. The demand for crystal meth in Berlin explodes. Everybody start using it, it seems like. This new meth is stronger than anything Europe has ever seen before. It became sort of harder to say no because that rush is so much stronger than any other drug that I've taken before. Germany could be headed towards a meth epidemic. Also, viele vergleichen es mit Alkohol oder mit Kiffen. Es ist eine Alltagsdroge. And the rest of Europe could soon follow. where we've been invited by Cracky Cooksburg, who's one of the biggest DJs in the hard tech scene. A subgenre of techno that has a suspicious number of songs about crystal meth. Crystal, crystal. You probably wouldn't associate crystal meth with raves and nightclubs. It's always been a drug that people take at home. But that's not the case in Germany's hard tech scene. Using that it's accepted in this hard-tech techno club and everybody knows and nobody gives a shit. It's really aggressive music. It's easier to dance to it if you're high on meth. So it helps you dance higher longer. <laughs> and it's very cheap. If you buy for 20 euros, then you're fucking high. Crystal might help you dance harder, but one big downside is that it can also kill you. And unlike opioids, there are no medications to treat meth use or reverse overdoses. I'm meeting with Cracky to find out why he'd glorify meth in his music if it's so dangerous to users. At your average hard tech rave, how many people would be using crystal meth? I was for a few weeks there at a Veranstaltung. And there was bestimmt more than half. So similar to the way someone might take a bag of MDMA into a rave and yeah. do a little key. Yeah. They're doing that with meth. With huge keys sometimes. <laughs> huge keys, okay. <laughs> Would you call meth use in the hard tech scene a problem? Ja, es ist ein großes, großes Problem. Und ich habe auch das Gefühl, es wird immer schlimmer, weil da auch immer mehr jüngere Menschen zugreifen. Das ganze Wochenende feiern gehst und so weiter, dann wird das für die Menschen halt wirklich ein Problem, weil sie halt nur auch in dieser Illusion leben und keinen anderen Rückhalt mehr haben. And you feel a responsibility now to not kind of glamorize it or glorify it in your music? My point of view, I've never glamorized it. I just use it to enhance some specific kind of atmosphere. Sozusagen, dass man es nicht tabuisiert. Ich denke, es ist ein, äh, ein Spiegel der Gesellschaft sozusagen, dass viele Probleme haben, viele sich auch flüchten in die Musik in Kombination mit der Droge. Und dass es halt auch irgendwo ein bisschen ein Hilfeschrei der Leute ist. The main reason Germany is being flooded with crystal meth is that new super labs have been set up in the Netherlands, across the country's northwestern border. There, organized criminals have recruited expert Mexican cooks to produce meth at unprecedented scale and strength. That production was intended mostly to serve the Asian market. But as the European appetite for meth grows, more and more appears to be remaining in the continent. This new availability came around while people were stuck at home because of coronavirus, searching for ways to fill their time. Tina is one of many in Berlin who started using meth during the pandemic. Why do you think people like yourself who might not have been using crystal meth five years ago are using it now? A lot have to do with corona stuff. Because of this corona lockdown parties, yeah. I kind of spiraled into this heavy drug use. It's a 
kind of a drug epidemic, I would say. I didn't thought that I was ever doing it because of the, all the stigma and mm -hmm. stuff. But actually, a lot of people are doing it. Most of the people are like ashamed to admit it. And how accessible is it? Like, how quickly could you get some now if you put a call in? Pretty quickly, I would say. It could be here in half an hour. Mm. There are some dealers, they have like a very specific menu for club kits. Right. Like um, they have like methadrone, ecstasy and crystal. And you're trying to quit at the moment, right? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm kind of scared about the side effects. You pretty much don't have an appetite at all. I'm actually at my lowest weight right now because of it. You can underestimate this drug really easily and it uh, slowly creeps into your life and it's really hard to stop it. I think a lot of people have an idea of a meth user in their mind and she definitely wasn't it. Kind of have to wonder if it was as accessible in other Western European cities as it is here, would we see the same thing? There is one scene in Europe where meth use has always been far more acceptable. Chemsex is the culture of combining sex with drugs, especially among men who have sex with men. So I'm about to meet Tadjo, who is probably the closest thing you can get to a meth evangelist. He loves it, and unashamedly so. It's Friday night, and Tadjo has invited me over while he gets ready for a kinky weekend with his master. Hey, Tadjo. Jamie, nice to meet you. Uh, come <laughs> Thank um, you very much. Beautiful apartment. I bought it with what I call my father's blood money. Um, <laughs> yeah. he's, um, he's a corporate lawyer. Let's talk about meth. Where did you first come across it? In San Francisco in 2010. A guy contacted me on a, on a website called Manhunt. I walk into his flat. He just pushed me down on the, on the floor, put his cock in my mouth, um, and then grabbed a pipe. I sucked his cock, he smoked a bit of the pipe, and then he replaced his cock with that pipe in my mouth. I took a few drags, and um, lo and behold, there's a photo of me an hour later, like totally trussed up on his bed, grinning stupidly at the amazing sense of, wow, being tied up feels amazing. I realized that it was the specific effect that Chris Smith had on me um, that allowed me to access this side of me. For me, who was taught to build incredibly strong, powerful walls of shame around my sexuality. Without crystal meth, I could not have broken through these strong shame barriers. And I feel that is the most real and best part of me. And I mean, you can't knock that. I'm not denying the dangers of crystal meth. I'd be stupid. I mean, I've had sex with people and then six months later, they disappear of any of the apps and you, a year later hear that, oh, they, they, they sort of passed away or they, got, they went nuts. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been using the drug for 11 years. Mm -hmm. I would say that my life's not totally fucked up. And yet every other weekend, I take crystal meth with my partner slash master mm -hmm. and we have amazing experiences. There's a lot to prepare, but for this, for this weekend... Traditionally, we'd play from Friday evening to Sunday evening. So after, like, 24 hours of, of having sex with Marcel and serving him and just running around doing everything he wants and needs, I need food. So I need to make sure there's easily edible things. But I think it might surprise a lot of people of how kind of regimented you are, for one of a better words. I'm, I'm the boy in... scout of drug use, Yeah, totally. I think in, in, in the drug world, it's called harm reduction. Like, if I kept taking drugs without eating, at some point I'd just collapse, mm -hmm. which would also just mean nobody would have fun, and, and my lovely master would go unserved. So Tadjo is just uh, preparing the flat for Marcel's arrival. He smoked a little bit, so he's very high energy. Tadjo has an attitude towards meth I haven't encountered before. We make arguments for harm reduction around ecstasy or cocaine. So, you know, why not take the same approach towards crystal meth? All set. I'm an overachiever even as a slave, as, <laughs> as it were. Everything has to be perfect. There's something missing balancing the statue of Marx on this side. My sort of goal is to create the zero effort position for him. Right. Sounds like someone's here. Hello. <laughs> I 
Potter, how does Crystal play into your relationship? It's part of it. It's, 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 it's not the center of it. It enables it to a certain extent, but it's not the cause of it. I mean, our relationship is, is based on our love. If you could let yourselves out. Of course. Enjoy. Well, we <laughs> Until recently, meth wasn't easy to come by in Berlin. But with users in the city now saying they can get hold of it within half an hour, it's clear there's no shortage of dealers ready to meet you with a bag of crystal. So we're just on our way to meet a meth dealer in Berlin, or at least we think we're on our way. We've been trying to track him down for a little while, so we're currently just driving around, and hopefully we'll be able to find him soon. How have you noticed the demand for crystal meth changing in Berlin over the last few years? The demand of Berlin explodes uh, for crystal meth, and so everybody started using it, it seems like. Did you notice an increase in demand during lockdown, during the coronavirus lockdown? Yes, people got the idea, oh, I, have to, I don't have to work, I can do whatever. So Corona makes a lot more Clients. When you were at your busiest, how much were you selling a night? 20 up to 50 grand. And do you have any you can show us at all? So this bag, the whole pack is small now. The, the price is going down. Now it's like 60 up to 80. 12 years ago it was like 180 per gram. So it's halved in price? Yes. It's more here, coming here inside. It's right. Before there was maybe one kilo, and now they bring inside like 20 kilo. Berlin is one city where the meth market has dramatically exploded in recent years. We've woken up to the news that customs forces have made the biggest crystal meth bust to date in Berlin. We head straight to the customs office to take a look. Wow. That's a lot of meth. We suppose that most of this crystal is for the Berlin market. That is weighty. That's a kilo. So how much would that cost you on the street? On the street about 80,000 euro, 60 to 80,000 80, euro. Altogether, it's 18 kilos. How do people transport it into the country? We suppose that all these drugs yeah. came by car. Right. Uh, just by car from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So this is the biggest seizure so far. Are you concerned that this is going to keep increasing and we're going to see a bigger meth use problem in Berlin? We suppose so, that, that it really will be a bigger problem in the next years. That's the normal way with all of drugs, especially new drugs. We have a market in Berlin for crystal that's sure. We suppose that's, that's an increasing market, market. The vast amount of meth being produced in the Dutch super labs is more than enough to supply Berlin's growing market. But the drug hasn't always been this easy to come by. Most of Europe's meth used to come from inefficient DIY labs in the Czech Republic, which would only traffic their product as far as Eastern Germany's border cities. Authorities in Dresden are already noticing the difference in the quality of the meth reaching their city. How big of an issue is crystal meth for you in this region? Crystal begleitet uns seit Ende der 90er Jahre und wurde zunehmend zum Problem hier in der Region. Es war eine hohe Verfügbarkeit vorhanden aus Tschechien. Ja, ich möchte Ihnen mal äh, anderartiges Kristall zeigen. These are huge. So rein die, die optische Konsistenz, also die Größe der Kristalle verrät uns, dass es aus Holland kommt. Das hängt mit dem Herstellungsprozess zusammen. So it's more of a professional operation in the Netherlands compared to the Czech Republic. Das stimmt auf alle Fälle, ja. Also in der Regel waren die Kristall, die wir aus Tschechien hatten, eher so in diesem Bereich. Das ist eher so die Größe. So that's a Czech crystal and that's a Dutch crystal. It's quite a difference. Und sie sind in der Lage, viel, viel größere Mengen herzustellen. Wir reden also hier vom dreistelligen Kilogrammbereich der Kristallproduktion bis hin zu einer Tonne, die in diesen Laboren in Holland möglich ist zu produzieren. Und diese Ware schwappt dann wieder nach Deutschland auf unseren Markt und teilweise auch in Städte, die vorher mit Kristall kein Problem hatten, wird auf einmal Kristall angeboten und gehandelt. So as you see shipments like this coming in, does that worry you about how you're going to be able to control the kind of level of meth making it into Germany? 
Also äh, bislang war es nur ein mehr oder weniger ostdeutsches Problem, das Kristall. Aber wenn das flächendeckend angeboten wird und auch kostengünstig angeboten wird, dass halt äh, mehr und mehr Bevölkerungsschichten zu Kristall greifen als zu anderen Drogenarten, die Droge nicht wieder wegbekommen, solange sie verfügbar ist. Und dort bleibt es jetzt abzuwarten, was die Holländer tun können, dass diese Droge nicht Droge Nummer eins Europa oder weltweit wird. Meth use has always been highest in the east of Germany. And with the arrival of the Dutch crystal, the region is fast becoming one of Europe's crystal meth hotspots. Here, one group has recently set up a harm reduction scheme to help users. I'm just outside Effort, a city in eastern Germany that in the most recent wastewater analysis showed the most amount of methamphetamine in Germany and the second most amount of methamphetamine in the whole of Europe. And I'm about to meet a group that drives a van to raves and events and parties where users can go and have their drugs tested. Come inside. Thank you. So we are the first on-site drug checking uh, project in Germany. So since three months, we are really on the road, visiting festivals, parties, and um, doing the analysis uh, f from your yeah, substance. So when people are coming in to get their drugs tested, what exactly, what information are you giving them about those drugs? Actually, we developed the, really the first test kits in the world, which can uh, show quantitative results. So we can see the concentration from these drugs. So we are seeing that most of the normal speed like the amphetamines, are really low concentrated and the crystal meth samples are really high concentrated. So they tend to have a, a higher purity. A guy joins us to get his drugs tested. So what have you brought in to get tested? Hopefully amphetamine. So at first we need 20 milligrams of the substance. So now you have to bring the whole amount into this uh, vial. So methamphetamine is about as popular as it gets in Eastern Germany. Are you seeing meth creeping into other drug samples that you've tested? More and more we are seeing crystal meth inside. And then we find it also with these test kits in, in higher amounts. And I think, um, yeah, nobody of the people is really aware of this problem. What drugs are you finding crystal meth in? Uh, amphetamines. That's, that's the, the classic ones. Crystal meth is already much stronger than speed. And with the arrival of the Dutch labs, it's become even stronger and cheaper. This means dealers are able to cut small amounts of crystal meth with other substances and sell that as pretend amphetamine. So now, the reagent. So what are we seeing here? It takes a little bit more time for development, but I think it's a little bit crystal meth inside here. So normal amphetamine should stay uh, yellow. Yeah. And uh, what we see can here clearly is uh, a, a color. So if it's uh, get colored, it definitely has um, some meth inside. So this was brought in as what you thought was speed, but yeah. it looks like it's actually got meth in it. Yeah. And how do you feel about that? Oh, it makes me insecure. Like in this case now, I'm happy that I have this opportunity here mm. to know that I don't want to use this anymore. And I would never, like with intention, use crystal meth. And why would you not use crystal meth over using normal amphetamine? Because I've seen people that became like zombies. So it's much too strong. Yeah, it's like Hitler's beat, you know. Right. Uh, so we can put that in the rubbish. So you're going to get rid of this now because you don't want to take it? Yeah, exactly. And what is this that he's pouring it into? That's like pure acid. Bye-bye meth. Bye-bye meth, yeah. Users are right to be worried about meth. Compared to other drugs, a larger percentage remains unchanged in the body, meaning much longer highs. This can lead to sleep and food deprivation for days at a time, as well as neurotoxicity and brain injuries. The rising demand for all this super meth means rising profits, and users might not realize where a lot of that money is going. To a notorious gang whose beliefs probably don't chime with those of users at Berlin's raves and chemsex parties, the neo-Nazis. So you have uh, insider knowledge of Germany's neo-Nazi scene, right? Yes. Could you talk a bit about how involved Germany's neo-Nazis are in the crystal meth trade? It plays a very big part in the neo-Nazi scene. Most of the neo-Nazis have no work, but need money. And crystal meth is the best way to get the most of the money. And do you have an idea of how much they're making from selling crystal meth, say per month? I think could be more than 200,000. And who are they getting to sell it within Germany? 
most time teenagers. How young are the teenagers? Young, 12, 13. 12, 13. Am besten sind immer Kinder unter 13 Jahren. Die sind noch nicht strafmündig. Und die verkaufen dann auf Spielplätzen oder an Schulen oder an Erwachsene. So they're recruiting these children to sell it. Once they've got these kids involved in the selling, do these kids then go on to use the drug as well? Ja. Die Kinder sind teilweise selber abhängig. Entweder wollen sie sich Geld dazu verdienen oder anteilsmäßig ihre Drogen verdienen. Das ist aber auch so gewollt, weil immer neue Süchtige bringen immer neues Geld und immer neue Drogenverkäufer und wiederum mehr Geld. How would the, the kind of average teenager in Eastern Germany feel about crystal meth? Eine Droge mehr, vergleichbar mit Alkohol. Also viele vergleichen es mit Alkohol oder mit Kiffen und finden es nicht so schlimm. Es ist eine Alltagsdroge. This scenario is a dream situation for the super labs. Users have started viewing meth the same as any other drug, instead of the massively destructive substance that it is. It's the stigma and the lack of availability that has always kept Europe relatively meth-free. But both of those safeguards are beginning to fade away. And with those gone, the catastrophic consequences of a meth epidemic that we know from the USA and Asia could soon follow in Europe.